question. What are these jobs have in common? Accountant, carpenter, beautician, electrician, photographer, graphic artist, interior designer, choreographer, writer, chef, seamstress. They all work in the Oklahoma film industry. And there's a place for you to join the action. Learn more about starting your film career in Oklahoma by visiting okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. Hello, and welcome to the 20th annual Dead Center Virtual Film Festival. My name is Yusuf Kazemi, and I'm the Outreach and Production Manager for the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. We're proud to be a returning sponsor of the festival and bring you our OF and MO Film School series today. Our next session is going to be super special. We are doing a session on location scouting featuring Oklahoma film professionals Allison Nafee, Chris Kucharski, and Dylan Brody. Stay tuned for their presentation. We're going to get out of the classroom and see some very cool Oklahoma sites. If you're watching through social media, make sure and hang around in the comments, and give us any questions, and we'll be sure to provide them in the live Q&A. And for everyone, there will be a live Q&A at the end of the presentation where your questions will be answered. So stay tuned, sit back, enjoy, and enjoy our next Film School Series presentation. Hey guys. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Um, so I'm glad you guys could come meet me out here on this nice stretch of uh, Route 66. The um, mother road, as they call it. Yeah, yeah. I got a great script from uh, up and coming screenwriter um, Steve Hannon. I love Steve. Yeah. He's so talented. Yeah. And uh, it's called Jack and Jill. And I just sent it to you. Um, I figured that maybe we could uh, look through it and kind of mark it up a little bit. Okay. And divide and conquer today. Um, maybe each of us grab a handful of locations and put a package together, shoot it off to Steve, see what he thinks, and uh, go from there. I'm game. Sounds, Sounds like good. fun. Yeah. yeah. Love to. So, look, I'm looking through it right now. It looks like we've got a small town, which um, could either be, you know, it might be Guthrie, but it could also, but I, I thought it also might be Arcadia. True. Mm -hmm. You know, since we're, it's just down the road here. Right. Um, and then we've got a state highway, which if we're going to be out near Guthrie, maybe we should do it on 33, yeah. kind of. Yeah, it's helped us out in the past. That could be great. Yeah, out it's by um, stretch by Langston. Out by Langston. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome out there. And the beauty part about the Langston thing is that State Highway backs right up to a stadium and uh, sort of stadium hallway, and that could play right there at Langston University. So maybe, maybe um, Allison, could you give Matra a call sure, over at I'd Langston U? Awesome. She's um, great to work with. Yeah, she's awesome. And then Dylan, while we're at it, maybe you should call uh, Mr. Fortney in Guthrie. Yeah, Justin, help us out before, help us out again. I love that man. Yeah, yeah. And then finally, I think um, there's a small house that plays in with this small town. And I think we might be able to do some in Guthrie and then maybe some in Arcadia where Arcadia doesn't have the size. Maybe Guthrie has the size and then... Um, we could probably nail down the neighborhood and the house could be just down the road here in Arcadia. I'll take it. I love scouting Arcadia. Yeah, We're cool. Great to work with there. Cool. So if you want to do that, and then maybe set me, you know Matra better than I do, so maybe set me up in Langston. Got it. I'll run out to Langston, and then maybe you hit Guthrie and uh, say hi to Justin for us. And then maybe we can all kind of link up at certain points during the day. That'd be great just to see how far we've come or what contacts uh, you're uh, reaching out to and what you've gotten so far. We'll just we'll just compare notes. That sounds good. Yeah, I think so. Sounds good. Cool. We'll be back at it. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have something to do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that's everything. Um, you know, I'll try and take this while you're running out to Guthrie, I'll try and maybe do a little bit of a breakdown yep. um, so that we have it on paper and then start a, um, 
maybe a lookbook based on some file pools and stuff like that. And Al, I know you have a lot of stuff from Guthrie too. Maybe we could start a smug mug too, so that we, on the tail end, we don't have so much work to do tonight. For sure, I've got a whole photo library full of different slides out of Guthrie. Yeah, yeah, cool guys. Well, awesome. um, yeah, take good notes, and uh, we'll kind of see each other throughout the day. Maybe meet up for lunch somewhere. Um, awesome. Glad to be working with you guys. Thanks Likewise. for. You too. Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Be fun day. All right. I'm ready. All right. Safe travels, everybody. All right. Thanks. Hey, Justin. How are you doing today? Good. Good to see you. All right. So, Justin, tell me about the State Capitol building. This building, uh, it was the the home to publishing in uh, basically the, the entire region of the country, uh, west of the Mississippi, for a long time. And it's one of the most iconic buildings in Oklahoma. Nice. Well, uh, let's take a look inside. Just to be an interesting place is that even after it stopped being a, a newspaper publishing journalism kind of hub, uh, it went straight from being that to being a museum for all those things. So it kind of just froze in time. Uh, so you get like really interesting things like the old cashier's window, which is still like you know immaculate. Uh, and for however many decades, if you needed like basically any form that you would ever need to do anything in Oklahoma, like all those forms were in these hundreds of boxes and the little file drawers, which those forms are still in the drawers. Which wow. Is super weird and cool. um, yeah, just, it's amazing what had to happen pre-computers, just shelves upon shelves upon shelves of uh, paperwork. There is so much detail here, Justin. So, uh... Can you give me one minute? I need to take some photos here. Yeah, absolutely. Take your time. Right. Thank you. When you're in a location, you can get overwhelmed just by the sheer amount of cool stuff that's around you. So it's good to take time and really process the place. Because when you're a location scout, you can be in a location weeks or months before anyone from the creative team will ever land. So you need to process the location, process all the details, get some shots, reverse shots, so that the creative team can actually see the location as how it could potentially appear on film. Okay, so Justin, this, this building is absolutely incredible and we have to figure out some way to use it. But what I'm really on the lookout for right now with this script is a downtown street. And I know Guthrie has those. What do you, what do you have in mind? Uh, let's go up to the balcony. I can kind of show you some uh, streetscape views from up there. I think what, uh, what might attract a lot of filmmakers to downtown Guthrie is uh, is the flexibility of the streetscape. It's being a preserved historic streetscape like it is, uh, it lends itself to anything from like a, a turn of the century period piece, like a Teatro where they you know cover the street with dirt to like maybe like a mid-century type thing, uh, like a marvelous Miss Maisel type uh, streetscape on up to you know, like a, a Rain Man situation where they just needed some like classic Americana small town Main Street. So uh, it, it has been and can be used for uh, a lot more than just uh, you know, a, a Victorian uh, space. Thanks. Thanks for being here in Guthrie today. So how'd the scout go this morning? What did you guys grab? Oh, the scout was brilliant. Uh, I had never gotten the opportunity to go inside the state capitol building before, and I saw some sites that uh, I'm really pleased. I saw some absolutely terrifying sites <laughs> as well, but uh, we had a great time. And uh, Justin pointed me in the right direction of the, uh, the downtown streets that we need for Jack and Jill, so I'm super excited about what we found. Cool. And uh, now, honestly, I would love to hear about what uh, Guthrie has in store now. I think one of the, the one of the cool things about Guthrie in general is that the folks who live here are, you know, for the most part, pretty film friendly. Uh, you know, folks who live in Guthrie kind of like to show Guthrie off. Uh, we're uh, we have a sense of uh, uh, showmanship to living in Guthrie, so that lends itself to to films being shot here. So yeah, I, I mean, I can totally testify to that. It's uh a really film friendly place. I'm glad you guys came out today uh, and we as a you know a community and a city uh, 
we really embrace filmmaking here. Not only just because it's you know it's the economic development of it, but we also like are super big fans of just more art being put into the world. And so the more we can help uh, make that uh, uh, an easy and effective and efficient process, hey, we want to see more art. Great, awesome, beautiful. Thanks so much. So I guess we'll see you guys in Langston next. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. We'll get taken off. We're still going to get scouts. All right. All right. Cool. Take Thank care. Thank you, Justin. Bye. We Take appreciate you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, so we're here in Langston University Stadium. And honestly, I've looked around a little bit. I think this is probably ideal for the scene where we're sort of see Jack and Jill rolling uh, the carpet up. So... I kind of want to shoot this and keep in mind a place for the actors to kind of uh, do their work. So what I'm going to do is obviously first take the camera lens off and then keep in mind sort of our composition and such and shoot one this way and then come over here and probably do a reverse. And then it's nice because we've got this little alcove where we could probably hide some of the crew and shoot out of that way. Yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, and then what we'll do, I mean, this is great because then we've just come out of this work we're always thinking about when we're scouting time-wise where things are going to be and stuff like that. And this is really ideal because we're not only near the road, like we talked about, where we're going to do some road work, it looks like. But we've also got clear passage right out onto the field. Hey, and there's Allison out here. Hey, Al. Yeah, so, good Lord. Yeah, it's great. You know, the thing to think about when you're in a space this huge is a sense of scale. Because, especially, I've got a wide-angle lens, a 24-12 to 12 on right now. And if I shoot a photo, it's almost like taking a photo of the Grand Canyon. You know, it just doesn't do it justice. And so what you want to do is kind of get some different angles and get some... Al's perfect right here, because then I can have a shot of her in the foreground with the stadium proper in the background and that gives a sense of scale and I think you know what the heck I need to work out I'm probably gonna go up to the top of this stadium here real quick and get some from way up there and that way we'll kinda have our coverage <clears throat> and we can show how big this place is exactly. Matra, we scouted um, yesterday at uh, Langston University on the football field and uh, really found some great stuff there um, and wanted to understand a little bit more about Langston University as sure. the campus, the history behind it, um, and where you guys see yourself right now and moving forward. Okay, well thank you. Delighted Thanks. to be able to share with you all today. Mm -hmm. Langston University, historic Langston University, was founded in 1897 as part of the Second Moral Act. And um, what started, we were founded in the town of Langston, and the town of Langston is one of um, 13 original all black towns still in existence today. Langston, the town of Langston was founded by Edwin McCabe, who was a financial auditor in the state of Kansas um, after the land run of 1889 when um, the territory was opened for more settlers that were non-Native American or non-Indian. Um, Edwin McCabe came to Oklahoma and he essentially wanted to establish an all black state. Um, he purchased 320 acres and from that, um, eventually founded Langston University, one of our founders. And it was part of the Second Moral Act because 
at that time, people of color did not have options for higher education. So um, it was founded so to, to provide opportunities for um, people of color. And what started with several founders and a few students, um, today we have over 2,500 students. There are three campuses. We like to say nestled on a city, you know, on a city, um, on a hill, is our Deer Langston, our flagship campus, which is located about 10 miles east of Guthrie. And a lot of our, the majority of our traditional students attend um, that campus to receive their education. Well, thanks, Matra. I appreciate that explanation and um, a sort of a brief rundown of the history there. I know that um, I can speak for all of us when I say that um, it's nice to be able to drive out to Langston University and see that diversity on your campus. And um, I think that Oklahoma needs as much of that as possible. And I'm very proud to um, see an institution with um, such a historic background and a promising future um, to sort of nurture that diversity that the world needs more of. So um, thanks so much for your time. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. And uh, really appreciate you allowing us the time to scout at Langston. Thank you. Thanks happy so happy to be a part of it. Yes. Cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah, and here um, we got, I think, a really perfect place for the carpet. Um, we'll show it to the director and see what he thinks. But um, I, I think it will probably work. Yeah, and then, um, tunnel and the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And then out here, it was perfect because I walked in, Al was right here, and we were able to show perspective. But you know, the coolest part about this place, I think, and the thing that's maybe going to sell it is right out here, we've got this really nice staging area for what promises to be a really good road to do some of the uh, driving stuff that we were talking about. Perfect. You get yeah. One. Yeah. And then the other thing too, and you know, if this works out to be two days or maybe they're going to join them together to be one day of work, then we can have a lunch over here. The company can park, crew parking, all that stuff can be right out here. And we'll have easy access not only to the scene with the carpet, but the scene on the field and then the road work out here. Well, that's so um, nice. We won't even have to move base camp. Yeah. 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 I mean, it just serves all purposes, but you can ask for a better location. Yeah. So the one thing I did want to talk about before we got to the road work, uh, the differences in roads and um, different shots, rather, not in the roads. So that it's important to note that we could have, um, I guess, a Russian arm, which would be a, uh, a car with a long boom attached to it and then a camera. And they usually use that for, you know, car to car work, which would be cameras in one car, or in this case, on the end of a boom on one car. And then the actor or the talent is in a different car and you're shooting that car, either tracking or approaching and then a pass or something. Then the other thing that you often see happen is the simple camera on sticks on the side of the road as the car drives past and the talent's obviously in the car. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the other thing would be a process trailer, which is kind of like the, they used to do it in the old days with the green screen and you'd see them the kind of, yeah, and it'd be <laughs> bouncing around behind you. Right. And, and now we kind of do that in a better way where we put actors actually in a car that's moving down the road, but they're on a trailer. So it looks like the car's moving and that the actor's driving but the actor can focus on their work and they don't have to worry about driving and it's safe. And we get to have a bunch of highway patrol with us so we look extra cool. Yeah, sure. yeah. That place, that time is always fun. Quarterbacking with uh, cops. Well, because the crew is also. You've got your director, you've got everybody right there also along for the ride. Yeah, they're, they're right in the process trailer. Uh, not on the actual process trailer, but on the truck that's towing the process trailer. Um, I guess... Oh, and then I guess the other, the one that I haven't talked about is, you know, another simple one, which would be put the camera in the same car that the, and they're just driving down the road. And then sometimes what you'll do, what you'll see is they'll, the actor will actually be driving 
and the camera's from behind, but that's when there's not a whole lot of work, the dialogue might not be important, and the actor can really focus on driving. Or you might not have the money for that fancy Russian art. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So there's all different types of road shots, but I think what's important and what we'll kind of get to is how to scout each of these so that the director knows, hey, this is what it's going to look like depending on what kind of toys I have to play with. Well, I've got the safety vest. Want to get to it? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. We'll see you in Arcadia, Al. I'll see you guys there. Thank you so much. See you soon, Al. Hey, and thanks to Langston for this uh, wonderful location and spot. Here I am on the side of what is old Highway 33. Um, I think this is probably going to be better than actual Highway 33. Because um, I know that the director was talking about that we might have a short turnaround window to get a permit through. And um, that takes some coordination with uh, the Highway Patrol as well as the Department of Transportation. But I think this really works because... Uh, this is still Langston property here that we're on. Um, and then, of course, it's important to mention whenever we're scouting a road, we're always vested up um, with mud cut proper um, safety vests. I have my hazards on. I'm off the shoulder a little bit as much as I can be. Um, and then, you know, this is where we want to think about how this is actually gonna play on the day. So um, here we have a car coming and you'll see if I sort of tuck back here, then I can get a good shot of this car as it comes by. And that would be representative of the camera being on sticks or a tripod looking towards the road. And what I'll do here in a moment is go across the road and get it from a little bit further back of a vantage point. But before I do that, I want to wait for traffic and get a couple of shots safely from the road. And this would be a good representation for the director of what it would look like if he was to shoot the car moving down the road. And again, because we're on such a big area, it's nice to have my car or something that gives some scale so that you're not just showing a big area without any representation. So let me run across the road real quick and I'll get one looking back this way. So we got that shot across the road and luckily we were able to have some traffic to show scale. Uh, and now uh, the last thing I wanna do is two more shots, I guess. Not last thing, but two more. One from a higher angle uh, looking down the road and then uh, something in telephoto to show a sense of, you know, not only the foreground in the road, but how the road curves and that sort of stuff, because it doesn't always show in a wide angle lens. So I'm in Arcadia, Oklahoma, and I'm searching for a small house that would be perfect in the script for Jack and Jill. This is a great little house. It's got a great front porch. It's got a side yard, an uh, angle with a side yard, and a great carport. So when I'm out scouting, what I like to do uh, when I'm in a small town like this uh, and I'm on the street, I like to go knock on the door and see if anybody's home. So what I like to do when I'm out scouting and I find a house that I think is perfect for the small town house is I always take a letter with me. I take a letter explaining the project, what we're looking for, because I'd really like to get inside, see the interior of the house as well as the exterior because the exterior looks great and I would love to show it to the director. 
but I need to get a permission from the homeowners. I always take painter's tape and I always tape it on their front door. So that way they have my cell phone number, they have an email, and that way they can see it and call me. Uh, never put a scout letter in a mailbox, that's illegal, and a lot of times people don't see it. So this is just really a good way to get somebody's attention that you've been here and you'd like to talk to them. So this, hey Chris, I'm glad you made it to Arcadia. Yeah. Man, I, I love this uh, small town. Uh, this is really cool right here. I'm really close to this great little house that I just found for this location. Yeah, that's cool. And right here, caddy corner across the street, is this great area. It's the farmer's market area. It could be used as staging, work truck parking, craft service area, extras holding. And it's awesome because it's right here on the same street and it keeps everything close. If he likes, if the director likes this location, this would be perfect. There's so much to be offered on this street. Yeah. Let's go check it out. You want to? Yeah, let's okay. Go. Hey, Al. Uh, good stuff here. Looks, looks really awesome. Uh, we're sitting in what looks to be a perfect base camp. Um, and we've got facilities nearby at the Arcadia Farmers Market right here on the mother road route 66 yeah great great for some alternate road work going off on 66 and also chris i did notice just scouting there's another huge parking lot for trucks crew parking additional parking uh right across the street from this farmer's market so i think this is a great location i hope the director and those that we bring it to like what we're finding here yeah yeah likewise uh, hey, Dylan. Hey, look Dylan. who it is. Hey, I had to go get a look at that red barn. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, that yeah, that's red a barn cool one. Great. <laughs> Arcadia's famous for that. So, uh, Dylan, thanks for your help with the road work, man. Um, sure. Yeah, and uh, I think, guys, that really wraps it up. Well, I think we've got a couple of really good locations for uh, our report. Um, I think now what it's going to take is us uh, getting back and sitting down to put together um, a sort of a lookbook of sorts that's going to lay out where all these places are on a map uh, and then a smug mug gallery. Um, a lot of people use different sites um, but we've kind of found that smug mug works best for us. Um, but at any rate, yeah, sort of upload um, and download or upload and sort of download all that information um, off of notebooks. Um, I think it's important to note that, you know, everywhere we were going today, we were getting detailed contact info, um, trying to make it as easy as possible on um, whoever the manager is going to be to reach back out and find out not only who owns houses, but, you know, if I was scouting from a field, wh who owns that field, you know, and um, who the authority is, for instance, on this fabulous stretch of Route 66. Um, who we're gonna need to Dylan, you touched on it a little bit, I think, in Guthrie, but, uh, you know, it's, it's just important to realize that when you're scouting a project, that you're sort of the first point of contact. And these spots that are going to be chosen are going to be revisited, but, you know, you need to kind of do some of the legwork on the front end to make sure that these places are going to be, you know, for lack of a better term, film friendly. Exactly. And it, it could be legitimately months before someone else could step foot onto these properties. So you need to do your due diligence, take your time and uh, show the production team just what this location has to offer. We've sort of narrowed down on some heroes, or what we think are going to be heroes, but there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be not selected, you know, in that, in that like, sort of big, open locations report. There's going to be a lot of stuff that the director's just not going to bite on, and they're not going to be selected. So we need to be able to keep in touch with those contacts, because they'll be used on the next project or the next project or the next project. Um, 
So sort of keeping in contact with those people and don't kind of leave them out hanging in the wind. That's, that's a good point to make because it's not just the current project you're working on, it's all the future projects and building your Rolodex, building your lookbook from there and fostering those relationships so you can keep coming back and keep bringing the film to home. You know, one of these houses might be perfect for a really small indie budget where there's not that many people going in and you don't bring the whole circus with you, but um, it'll be a different story when, you know, a big like studio film rolls into town and, and they want to shoot it there. I mean, it, uh, A, it might not logistically even work just because of the size of the property. And then B, you know, that homeowner might not be willing to deal with a big project of that size because it's going to mean that they move out of their house for, you know, weeks on end and they, their, you know, floors are completely changed and then changed back and they might just not want to deal with that hassle, whereas another location would be savvy to it. So, you know, I, I think like just because we scout something for one project, it's not going to be perfect for the next. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. I think we had a really good day today, everybody. Yeah. You too. Good work, you, guys. Say we go tie it up in a bow now. That's that's awesome. I'll uh, I'll get to work on getting some stuff out to the director. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. It was great to scout together today, you guys. So yeah. Great to scout together. Yeah. It was fun. Can't wait to see Jack and Jill. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, that works. We are thrilled to have Allison, Dylan, and Chris joining us by phone. You've just seen their amazing, amazing location scouting panel. And we want to thank you guys for that incredible presentation you put on for us. Welcome. It was fun. We, we had a fun. great time shooting it. You clearly, uh, between your experience, know what you're doing. It was so cool to, to have a virtual classroom outside of the classroom. So I think it's definitely engaging, super informative. And thank you for working with the locals, the location owners, and everything to put that together. We appreciate it. No, it was it was great. We were all talking, how do we really teach location scouting? And we just really came up with the idea. We recruited Steve Hanna to mm -hmm. actually write the script for us. And um, I just thought, well, we got to teach them. Let's start from the very beginning by doing a breakdown. Right. And what better way than visually, right? Mm -hmm. I, for me as a visual learner, it's one of the, the best ways to learn, I think. Right. No, it was, it was great. Well, I have to ask, how have you guys, you know, of course, we're still in the middle of COVID-19. What have you been doing? How have you been staying busy right now? Well, right now, um, I don't know if we're at liberty to say the title of it, but there is a project that we're, we're trying to... Uh, to lure to Oklahoma right now that Allison uh, and myself and Chris will also be uh, scouting next week for. So um, we're just trying to do have every extra little bit layer of uh, protection we can. We go out, you know, masks if we need to, gloves, whatnot. Just uh, being very cognizant of our surroundings, making sure we get all the permissions uh, just to, to do everything we need for this project. And uh, there's Oklahoma's got a very busy few months coming up, too, because uh, I also have reservation dogs on the uh, back burner as well. Uh, but thankfully, Chris, uh, myself, and then Allison was getting ready to join us as well. We'd already had our locations picked out for that. So once everything picks back up, uh, that looks good for that as well. Awesome. And feel free, whoever wants to take mm -hmm. what question here. Mm -hmm. But speaking in terms of preparation, how you've had to prepare to go out scouting now, in terms of... Scouting generally, anytime anyone is about to get in the car with a creative and take them across the state, what kind of things should a person in that position prepare for? I've been doing locations a long time. And it's uh, one thing that we're trying to stress or teach in this video or even the next generation coming up to do locations, um, it's not just cold calling or jumping in your car or getting a feel for the land, you need to do your research first. Really uh, read the script, do a breakdown. But but once you really get into finalizing where you want to go scout, you need to reach out. You need to start contacting people now. You need to, uh, especially homeowners, if you need to scout houses, you need to really reach out and work with realtors or um, get your list. Um, you know, you can check out who lives there, leave resident letters, come back. 
But it, right now, we're taking all precautions when we're getting ready to head out um, and go on our scout jobs right now, just breaking down the cities. But it's really reaching out, getting your your scout prepped for each day, almost like a little scout itinerary just for us to work within our own uh, day's work. Uh, but, I mean, it's it's with COVID, with wh- how we're reopening our state, it's been a tad bit challenging mm-hmm. uh, because a lot of places that we want to get into are not open right now. Correct. I mean, and, and just to sort of piggyback on what you were chatting about there for, you know, your your scouts that are just starting out, one of the most important lessons that I think we can impart to you here today is never show something that you can't get. So always get your scouts cleared. Mm-hmm. So like if, if a, a director says, oh, I want to go see just like a mansion, you can't just go drive, say, oh, that mansion looks cool, take a picture, share it, and then the director wants to shoot there. Just always make sure that uh, you do your do- due diligence, make contact with the location, get, get permission to shoot, then you share Absolutely. And, and, and Chris, yeah. we first connected at the Oklahoma Film and Music Office where you were in the locations position for the state agency here for film. Um, in terms of considerations for scout and hosting people, there's also, you know, different personalities, different dietary needs, things of that nature. So, you know, there's also a hospitality element as opposed to just the practical and the production element. Can you maybe to speak to some of those considerations that you uh, take into consideration when you're hosting people and driving them around the state? Sure. Uh, thanks, Yusuf. I'm happy to be with you guys over the phone. Um, I certainly learned a lot and uh, when I was at the film and music office about scouting, especially with, uh, you know, talent or director and uh it's important as allison was saying to do your research and have a sort of lined out itinerary when you have those folks in the car um and then also have a really good understanding of the state so that whenever they ask questions that you can answer those questions or give them the answer like find the answers for them uh, after the fact And then um, I would say also speaking to what Dylan just uh, said is it's important to show them locations that are feasible. You know, uh, a lot of times we uh, have a really, really great spot that might work for a smaller budget or smaller crew, but it's not going to work for a huge production without a whole lot of doing, you know, building roads and getting out there. So you kind of have to keep those things in mind whenever you're scouting. That's absolutely right. And, and something Allison mentioned too, in terms of, um, you know, don't show something that you can't deliver on. Right. Are there other common mistakes that might be made by people just getting into this uh, profession that you could suggest that maybe they could avoid when they're starting out to start off on the, on the best foot possible. Well, uh, Chris, do you want to answer that or you want? No, uh, you know, I think it's really important whenever you are out scouting um, to have an understanding of what a footprint of a project looks like. So, you know, a, a lot of times I know early in my career, I scouted some things with the thought that, you know, a production could come in and plug and play in a, in a location and then come to find out after the fact that it was going to take a whole lot of infrastructure planning and stuff. And so, you know, when you're working as a scout and then that manager comes in, that manager might be disappointed a little bit in your work after the fact because you didn't take those things into consideration. So I think, you know, a location scout um, can be a really trying position in some instances because they have to have these understandings about, um, you know, film. So I, I think the better thing to do whenever you're just starting out is to, you know, take a few PA jobs on as many projects as you can to get um, a feel for what that looks like. Well, I just want to chime in here. To get the knowledge and the scope of what a production looks like, when Chris mentioned the footprint to a set, you're you're not just scouting a location. You're also scouting base camp, crew parking, catering, holding, 
And in the, the new world that we're going to be going into, you can't just find one place for holding anymore. We're going to be limited on how many people we can get into a holding room. Um, right now, that's what we're looking at. And also another key in locations, you may find some great locations, but we have, we really have what we call a studio zone that we like to keep our locations in play um, and not drive too far away. But also when you're scouting, it's nice to kind of build your location to where they play with other locations. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just makes sense. It's less travel time. And when you are moving a company that a company move uh, can take quite, um, quite a bit of your day out. So it's all encompassing. Just, you know, you're looking not just for the best location, but you're looking for components that build that location and make it great. And, and you might have a great location you find, but there could be no logistics around it either. So it looks cool, but you right. can't have your world around you. Right. And you just kind of hinted at some of the new precautions mm-hmm. coming into play with going back to set, resuming production at the time of COVID-19. Are there any other, and I'm sure there's a lot because we've seen a lot of guidelines and documents come out from different unions, um, but are there are a couple of things you can highlight that are going to be big changes moving forward to consider? I think one of the biggest in our field is going to be hand washing stations uh, around lots of uh, wiping down of locations and uh, just maybe even bringing in cleaning services just to as a precaution in, at the top and begin at the end of each right, day. We had talked about Oki Clean. Mm-hmm. It would be a great source just to bring on our sets uh, to create this. And they're right here. I mean, in our state, it's great to bring in our local uh, homegrown companies to be with us in the safety uh, measures that we're going to have to take. We'd also talked earlier before coming on um, the um, temperature, the infrared mm-hmm. is what you were talking about, the stations where they can just walk through because it's all, if you have a hand thermometer, there's got to be efficient ways to, to actually take temperature from the set um, and washing stations. But also, I mentioned a holding room. We used to could put a lot of extras in a great church uh, room or break them down and give your key actors uh, a larger space. We're really going to have to learn the dynamics of how we move into this uh, post-COVID-19. And if mm-hmm. there's another return in the fall, how we face it, how do we keep working? Um, but it, it it does. It's going to affect us financially because we're going to have to add sp- uh, spaces. Um, and we've also talked, we're, we're in the guild and we're in the union, um, just about, you know, safety always falls under locations department. So not are you only handling scouting, contracts, police, security, everything else, but also safety guidelines. And so I think in the, in the new, near future or in our new way of working, it'll probably be a safety COVID uh, department as well or just a safety director. That's mm-hmm. going to be, don't you think, Chris, something new on that line, just a safety um, director? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's a good point. You know, our position is interesting in the fact that we come on generally uh, as one of the first positions hired. And so we create a lot of, um, or we give a lot of insight on location starting out in that manner. But then the other thing too is that locations is a relatively new position in the echelon of, you know, filmmaking, the history of filmmaking. It used to fall under producers and stuff. And, and so because of that, a lot of stuff sort of falls under our purview in locations. And so I think that we're going to be, um, you know, taking on a lot of that role as COVID, you know, is, is a new reality for us, uh, cleaning the location before we go in and then also, you know, cleaning it after we leave so that we're returning it in a position, you know, uh, what, so that the the owners can step back in and it could be fine. Well, and that's going to be a fee that probably locations will have to account for. We have to figure that out because they'll have to be disinfected, uh, before, like you said, before the crew comes in and, again, once we leave. But then also when you're in a home or even some of these companies, you're going to have to get commercial cleaning then to come in after. So, yeah, it's going to... It's going to change the way we work, and it will affect our budgets, our locations' budgets, for sure. Absolutely. And to switch the focus for a minute to, like, Oklahoma, you guys have been in the industry, have a lot of experience, 
but I'm sure there's still a lot of things that surprise you. So for each of you, what has been a pleasant location surprise or a gem here in Oklahoma that you're like, wow, I didn't even know this was here. Okay, uh, one one of my favorite ones, uh, Allison is probably sick of hearing me talk about it, is this abandoned school in Wakita that we've used multiple times. Uh, it, I believe it was due to budgetary reasons. It was abandoned uh, many, many years ago, but it is still perfectly intact. You go inside, and it's just like maybe the zombie apocalypse had happened. It's completely fully stocked, uh, computer lab full of computers. You go into the library, fully stocked, trophies everywhere. There's a giant box of yearbooks that were never even passed out in there. Uh, f of Almost a near Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's just I, I, if, if anyone's wanting to watch it at home, like the, the Criterion release of Wildlife just came out, mm -hmm. so you can see it in Wildlife, and then To the Stars, which is streaming now, you can see it on that uh, project as well. That's one of my favorite locations that I've, uh, I've seen in my day. What about you, Allison and Chris? Uh, I, Chris, I'm going to have to have you, you go next, because there's, I, oh, there's okay. so many locations uh, in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about a project um, that the three of us worked on, um, American Gods. And it was a really interesting project in the fact that they were willing to spend the money to drive and take crew way out further than normally would have ever been feasible for a normal production. And so we went out um, to uh, Little Sahara. And generally, I mean, that's a amazing place that we sort of supply in a scouting folder and a lot of people just take a look at the drive time and think yeah, there's no way we're going to make it out there and in this particular instance they did but even beyond little sahara there are some really amazing places out in the panhandle of oklahoma and uh, it is gorgeous country out there and i go quite often just for myself but i would love to see a production sometime in the future you know i know it's a logistical nightmare getting uh stuff out there and basing out of the panhandle but i i look forward to a project that has a small enough footprint that can utilize that location that's really funny because i was going to mention um when you and i scouted the panhandle for a feature film with a production from the uk and we did an aerial scout, but we took a small um, airplane with a two with a director and a producer. And Chris, do you remember this? And it was the most beautiful landscape. We have such diverse. I remember it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember it fondly. It That's... was it was wonderful. But it was like some of the most spectacular barns, farms. But it's the curvature of the earth. It's the it's some of the most beautiful landscape that we rarely get to film at because it is such a haul away from Oklahoma or from a major city uh, to, to hub and create a base camp, so to speak, and a PO for your, your crew. But that was probably one of the most precious gems in my pocket was just some of those locations in the panhandle uh, uh, because we had to scout some of those farms at the crack of, of sunrise, and you could actually see the curvature of the earth. I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? The sun's yeah, and amazing. you know, it's it's kind of cool, too, because um, I, I say this all the time. We've, we've seen a couple of uh, productions go up to Osage County just because of the unique um, landscape that's up there and the people that are there and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, projects are willing to take on that logistical challenge. And I know I can speak for uh, Dylan and Allison both that we love that kind of stuff. We love coming into a place and figuring out a way to make a project work in a, you know, underutilized area. So um, but we're all game for building roads and, you know, creating really experimental or uh, hard base camps and stuff like that. That makes my job fun. So. And some of the other beauties as well, um, we've all, we've, we're fortunate, we're friends, but we've got to work on some fantastic projects together. Um, but from eastern Oklahoma to the Panhandle to central Oklahoma and southern by Turner Falls, I mean, we've been fortunate. We've traveled our entire state, and it's, it's so fun and exciting to still go into some of these projects and just go, this is amazing, like, 
just the look or it's so beautiful or some of these projects that place it looks different so it just it's really awesome you know and it's a yeah it's been a a a great ride with these guys we've we've really got to see and scout and find a lot of amazing places in our state you guys are amazing that's for sure and so for people who are just beginning can i ask each of you what piece of advice would you give to someone before they start in the locations field in the film industry uh, I would definitely say, um, and I I was fortunate last year during Dead Center, I hosted a panel, but but I mentioned a mentoring program, and I've had a lot of people follow up wanting to come into locations of every age, some professionals, some just getting out of high school, some in college, and some studying film themselves and wanting to figure out how to be a location scout or actually manager, um, but get to know the set, get to know every department, uh, because uh, when you are a location manager, uh, you then figure out what everybody else needs from you. Uh, It's not just the beauty of finding this amazing location, but once you can PA or intern or get your hands or just get your eyes around a set, um, and then you'll know, oh, okay, so I want to go into locations, really trying to figure it out, you know, and just take note, but Try to, try to, if you're starting out, try to get with a location scout and just say, hey, can I go scout with you for a week? Or can I see how you scout, how you post your pictures on Smug Mug? Uh, what's the next process? Or, you know, and then if you want to move in to management, the next, there's, it's, it's a process. But get with somebody good and, and get some experience. And uh, I'll say just... Location scouting, it's not just about jumping in the car and going. Uh, When you're just starting out, a lot of locations uh, scouting work is detective work. You you might have to just go into some place you've never been before. Uh, If they don't, if the mayor's not there to talk to, you might have to go find the unofficial mayor, somebody that's just, uh, you you talk to somebody like, who's the person that knows everybody? You go find that person and you figure out what the town has. Or the mayor's cousin or the cousin's wife. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But in a grander (laughs) sense of folks just wanting to break into the industry, Uh, The best piece of advice I can give to anyone is that your work ethic is what's going to keep you going. So always be willing to learn and just show people that you're willing to work hard and that's what will keep you rising. And then as you keep getting hired just from your work ethic, then you can kind of gravitate towards the field uh, that you're interested in. And when you're in Oklahoma, we have such a, a loving family here that you don't you're not stuck in a, a field. Like if you start locations and you feel like that's really not your thing, you can go be a grip. You can go uh, see what the camera folks have to say. So don't be afraid to keep learning. Don't be afraid to keep trying. Also, uh, key number one, as a location scout, we all talked about this in the video. You are the first point of contact, the first mm-hmm. representative for this production. I always put on my best. I want to have a... a outgoing personality. I want to be confident uh, when I approach and I talk to people. I want to know, know the project. And um, I also, I don't want to show up looking like I just came from the gym. You know, I always try to put my best foot forward. So I think uh, representation, you're the first one out there. Always put your best on. Absolutely. And Chris, what about you? Last bit oh, of advice. I- <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, you know, I've been really fortunate throughout my um, career so far that I've been able to uh, be, um, you know, mentored by some really great folks. And uh, I was able to start at the film office and sort of dip my toe into the waters of locations and really figure out what it was about. And then um, when I went freelance, um, Allison took me under her wing and she was uh, really influential in my career starting. And then uh, I've worked with some outstanding manager, managers from there on uh, that have taught me a lot. And, um, you know, everybody that I work with now uh, teaches me something new. And um, I, I can honestly say that, you know, a lot of times uh, we hire people um, to start uh, as a PA and, you um, we kind of see something great in them and we're really, really anxious and eager to pull them through the ranks um, from there on uh, because it, it really does, like Allison said, uh, take a kind of an interesting personality that's going to be interested in 
not only, you know, all of the research and like kind of history and stuff like that about this state or, you know, wherever the location is that you're scouting, but also like someone that's going to be outgoing and really be interested in filmmaking and the locations that go with filmmaking. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, learn from everybody that you come in contact with. Don't be afraid to find a location manager and reach out because everyone that I know uh, is more than willing to take you under their wing and kind of show you uh, what it's all about. And then, uh, like Dylan said, work hard, you know. Well, this has all been so amazing and awesome. Allison Nafee, Dylan Brody, Chris Kucharski, thank you so much for your time and being a part of our film class today. We love and appreciate everything you do for us and for the industry. So thank you. Thank you. We love you too. Thank you. And guys, tune in. We still have more film school classes tomorrow. And we really appreciate your feedback. And thank you again. <laughs>